In today's episode, either suck it up or leave is not the way you want to address the person who's practically carrying the office. The peanut gallery, a math teacher, and how we all earned an easy A. Want me to pay the final month on my phone account? Here's my card info. So let's get started. Either suck it up or leave is not the way you want to address the person who's practically carrying the office. I worked in the service industry, well, to some extent, for about two years before the pandemic came. When I say to some extent, what I mean is I wasn't really serving anyone. I worked in a department called back office or BO for short. This is where goods come and go. Our department has two jobs, to check and to input, therefore we called them checker and data. The checker's job is to make sure that all orders are eligible. This included quality and quantity. After a checker has confirmed the order, the data will then input the information regarding said order in the system, after which the merchandise is ours and will not be eligible for a return. Therefore our department was extremely important, the work was stressful and more often than not heavily supervised. We used to have 8 people working at full capacity during the normal days and barely managed to get by. There were weeks when we had to work overtime almost every day just to get everything running in order. Because of these overtime hours, we got paid more than other departments, nearly 30 to 40 percent. Of course, this sparked controversy. Other supervisors argued that we're using our workload to exploit the company. Mine was having none of it. There were audits, sessions, supervision from the higher office, and they found nothing. They even tried to bring in another crew from another store that's closely related, they quit as a whole after one month. When we got back in control, we even requested more hours to cover the shit that they had left behind. Eventually, the store stopped trying to change us. Instead, they tried to limit our hours. We used to request two or three hours on busy days before, but then even when the store was practically buried under mountains of goods they only let us do one, very rarely two. We tolerated it at first. Normally we would stay past the requested hours to see things done, not because we love the job, god no, but because we're responsible workers, and if we didn't finish the work that day there were chances would get consumed by the flow of goods the very next day. But it was usually 30 to 45 minutes of those extra, one hour top. When the change happened there are days we had to do two hours extra with no pay. Yes, we should have said f asterisk ck it to their faces, but my supervisor asked us to stay and he'd try to fix things. He's a super cool dude and because I liked him very much, I agreed. The others weren't so cheerful, three left after a month, so we're down to five. Our HC then was three checkers, one data, and the cool dude. Us checkers suffered, yes, but the data was on the verge of collapsing. She would be the first to enter the office, and usually the last to leave. Her shift was 8 hours, but she worked 12 or more every day. More often than not two or three of them were unpaid. We tried to share the workload with her, but we couldn't even cover our own most of the days. His objection to the work hours came to no avail. They were aware that we deserved those hours, so they simply ignore his request and response with something general. He's pissed, it was July and the heat should not have come from the company as well. He requested a full audit, threatening to leave if things didn't change. They basically told him to either suck it up or go home. So he just left. He's the third person they've hired in three years to manage that office, so they thought he's just as disposable as the others. What they didn't know was, he's the only reason I and Mississippi data stayed, so when we knew what happened, we immediately noticed the HR that will also be leaving. They threatened us with penalties for unlawfully terminating our contracts because we hadn't given them two weeks notice, but we laughed it off and reminded them that being the special department, the BO was given an extra three days off each year, which totaled in 15 days. Also, our contract stated specifically that if someone quit, they could choose to either use their remaining days off and leave early or get them converted into payment. They were so surprised when they found out that we all had our days off fully intact, it's almost as if we had been too busy to use them or something, idk. 
so they couldn't do anything about it. We then left the office with everyone I shooting daggers. Of course, everything plunged into chaos. Did I mention that we're the most important department in the whole chain? Because we were, and they found it out the very, very hard way. The other two guys managed to last a week before also leaving, citing something like total madness or absolutely out of control. After they left, the store brought in a team of 10, but they couldn't have covered half our work despite being twice in number. Honestly, I didn't care about it that much, but it's not something that flew by. There were days when their store had nothing on the shelves, so people started to go to the other store in town to shop. When they got things back to somewhat normal, it was after five months and the damage had already been done. They closed last month and the place is now rented to some small business. Not as interesting as some of these stories, I just thought about it when cool dude called me last week. We were still friends, I'm out of town but we kept in touch. Apparently, after the other two guys quit, they called him and tried to get him back to work, but he's a free agent then and said he was gonna charge them twice for consulting fees, not sure if it's a thing. Also, he would only work with us, citing familiarity to the environment, and if not then he'd do exactly as stated in the contract, which would be sitting around and ordering everyone to do their jobs, seriously, he's supervisor, he didn't have to do anything, he helped us because we're head to toe in work, and he's a cool dude. He asked if they tried to contact me after that. They never did. The peanut gallery, a math teacher, and how we all earned an easy A. Hello Reddit. Come back with me, back in time to 1982. Michael Jackson was dancing with zombies, E.T. was setting the world on fire, and I was in grade 10. I was never what you would call smart when it came to math. English great. Art even better. Set me down in front of a page of numbers however, and I promptly turned into a gibbering, panic-stricken dum-dum. After a summer spent in remedial summer school, it was decided by those in authority that instead of the up math, university preparation, math I had been signed up for, I would instead be moved into the general, math for dum-dums, classroom at the start of the school year. I was very happy as my friends were also dumb dumbs and were already signed up for the class so the first day of school I skipped blithely through the door and sat down with my class of fellow dumb dumbs. Standing at the front of the room was a tiny little man in a rumpled suit and a receding hairline. Once we had all settled into our seats, the fellow introduced himself as our teacher for the year. Teacher, I will paraphrase his wonderful accent. Seriously, I loved his accent. Hello students. I am Mr. Moshi. You will call me Moshi. This is math for dumb dumbs. He really said that. You are here because you are not so good at the math so Moshi make deal with you. Every day you will come to the class. You will sit, talk to friends, play games. Moshi will read newspaper. Every day Moshi will ask one question. You try. Only try. Moshi give you an A. This class is the peanut gallery, only have to try. You get an A. Moshi red paper. Deal? We looked at each other, grinned and yelled deal. Math quickly became my favorite hour of the day. Each day we would spend the time chatting with our friends, playing games and Moshi read his paper and ate jelly beans. Before the end of each class, he would fold his paper, stand up and put a simple problem on the chalkboard for us to answer. This went on for about two months when one morning Moshi came into the class looking completely panicked. His hands were shaking and he was white as a sheet. Which for a man from India was impressive. Moshi Moshi is in trouble. Someone, rat teacher, tattled on Moshi. Tomorrow the school board is coming to review your class. Moshi might lose his job. I make a deal with you. You are Moshi's favorite dum dums. Tomorrow when school board comes, Moshi will teach. You will pay attention. Ask smart questions. Do work. Moshi teach. School board will be impressed and Moshi will keep his job. Oh how I love that man. 
After that Moshi will go back to reading his newspaper, and you can go back to talking with friends. Deal? We looked around at each other we had to protect our favorite teacher. Deal. The next day when we got to the classroom, there were two men and a lady in very dapper suits, scowling in the back of the classroom. We filed in quietly and took out our, still brand new, math books. Seriously they were so new I think some of them creaked when they were opened haha. We took out scribblers and pencils and calculators. We sat quietly like the perfect little students those big wigs expected to see. Enter Moshi. His suit was pressed. His shoes were polished. His hair was combed. This was serious. Never had 20 kids paid closer attention to a math lesson. All of us were riveted to Moshi and his chalkboard. We took notes, we asked questions hell we even answered questions posed by the school board monsters. We made sure we were absolutely perfect. At the end of the class, the school board drones left smiling after shaking Moshi's hand, and we breathed a huge sigh of relief while grinning at each other. The next day, Moshi came in the class beaming from ear to ear. Moshi Moshi loves his dumb dums. You all are wonderful. Moshi still has job. Today Moshi reads the paper, and you talk to friends. At the end of the year every single one of us had an A on our report cards. Wherever you are Mr. Moshi, I wish you well you were the best teacher ever. Small edit to respond to worries he did us wrong Moshi was sneaky. Those simple problems he put up each day? Followed the textbook. We learned basic math in spite of our seeming inattention, and all of us passed a simple one-page math exam at year's end. This is why he was such an amazing teacher. Want me to pay the final month on my phone account? Here's my card info. I live in Israel where the credit cards are mostly run and operated by banks rather than independent companies. Because the banks stand to profit from consumer debt and interest charges, they really push people to get credit cards rather than debit cards, and they work with big retailers to prefer credit cards by, for example, putting a surcharge on transactions using debit cards. They do still mostly offer debit cards though since families often get them for teens as a first step toward financial independence. My wife and I have long struggled over spending and debt and have, for the last several years, managed well by not using credit cards at all. When we came here, it took a bit to convince the bank representative that we really did only want debit cards. Nonetheless, we have them, and they work as expected in 99% of situations. One of those situations was for our cell phone contract, which we paid via debit card automatic withdrawal for the last two years. A few months back, the company started contacting us to tell us that we hadn't paid. We eventually figured out that their system somehow figured out that our card info was from a debit card rather than a credit card and they, according to their policy, stopped accepting payment. When we called to sort out the problem, and they refused to take our debit card as payment, our response was to change phone carriers. Since we changed carriers, the company has contacted us to pay for the final month's bill. When a representative called me a few weeks ago to ask for payment, I happily provided them my card details and told them they were free to take the payment. After the system refused payment, the representative realized it was because it is a debit card and told me. I'm sorry, our system can't take debit cards. To which I responded. I'm not sorry at all. This is a legal form of money. If you can't take my payment, that does not bother me. I think she was surprised and confused because she genuinely responded oh. Okay, and we hung up. They haven't gotten back in touch since. Update, my wife managed to pay the bill using her debit card. Perhaps she has a nicer voice. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.